Okay, hi everybody. It's Evening TV. Okay, and I got the last one in this series, that three or four or five really important lessons. And the last one of those was this. It's about unconditional love. So unconditional love, in my opinion, is a birthright of children. It's not something that we can give to anybody else. It's not something we, we, can, we give as an adult. It's something that we get as children. It's something that we are entitled to be born into a loving home where the adults in our life, the parents and the, and the, and the siblings, so the, the people that are there to, to greet us when we're born, when we're a baby, that we, we have as our birthright to be unconditionally loved by those people, by our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, whoever is there that makes up our community of people that's going to take care of us as helpless, vulnerable babies. And there's nothing that we can do to lose that love. We can't need too much, we can't cry too much, we can't, we can do, we can't mess up and lose that love. That's what makes it unconditional. Now that doesn't mean that we're entitled to, we're entitled to anything. We're not entitled to material things, we're not entitled to them buying us things, we're not entitled to them even liking us or spending time with us if we're a jerk or anything. Nothing like that. It only means that these people are going to love us. They're going to love us no matter what. Even if we mess up. Even if we, even if we do things they don't like. Even if we break the law. Even if we go to jail. Even if we, you know, if we, if we get sick. Even if we, if we do, you know, whatever. We, they're going to love us. They may not like us. They may not approve of us. They may not want to spend time with us. They may not want to support us financially they may not want to you know but they they love us because they're our mom or they're our dad or they're our brother or they're our sister or they're our grandma and that's just what you do now if some of us just get this and I don't know and others of us question it but I know there is nothing that my sons could have done that would make me not love them nothing now for me, it expanded out even further. I, I unconditionally loved all of my family. It, it isn't something that is reciprocal really with children going both ways. You know, I, I believe in my mind that unconditional love is our birthright as children. I don't believe that our parents can expect it from us. Although, although I, I believe I gave it to my parents. I believe that I did, I did love them. I loved and I, I, I would have done really anything for all of my family, all of my friends, but that was me. That That's not something I think that, that's not a birthright. That's not a birthright. And, and, and that doesn't mean that when they abused me, I could go be around them. I could, you know, I couldn't be. They abused me and then that changed our relationship forever. It didn't mean that I don't love them. And I would say that I still, uh, I still do love them. Even though, even though the them that I'm talking about is, is their very best self, is, is the best, is a better, is a better them than they actually were. We're really them at their very, very, very best selves. And the person that they saw me as was someone, not even anywhere, someone I wouldn't even like. They, they have recreated history. And you know you're so angry at me and at all of our all of your friends. And there's just no there's no that's based on nothing. That's based on absolutely nothing. There's no basis in reality for any of the things that they say about me. And so I am a figment of their imagination. And I'm a I I had to become the person a caricature of whatever they needed me to be to do what they wanted to do. And what they wanted to do was discard me, steal from me. Um, talk badly about me and act like they're victims of mine and so they had to, they had to make me into this you know ungrateful disloyal um, unlikable person that I just I just never was and so um, I as hurtful as that is I, I can't take it personally because it's not personal that that person is, has nothing to do with me and and it is my family doing it but they aren't the family that I 
that I believed they were, the family that I believed I had would never do that. The family that I miss is the family that said, you know, um, don't, don't air the family with dirty laundry. We, we protect our family. You know, we're loyal to family. That, that, was, that was the family that I grew up with. They said that as long as, <laughs> as long as they thought that it was their, themselves they were protecting. But when it came time to protect me, they not only wanted to share the, the dirty laundry, they were making up dirty laundry. And even that, you know, the, even that I have to write off too because it shouldn't have worked. You know, it shouldn't have worked. And if my relationships were, were what I thought they were, it wouldn't have worked. So those are, you know, for a person who really did base for the first three and a half decades of my life, my whole life was about relationships. It was all about these people that I loved and, you know, setting up a world where I could give and receive love and raise children in this community of people. And for a person who that was their priority, it, it is not ironic. I'm sure it's divine. I'm sure it was, you know, exactly set up by the universe to be this way, but what an extreme, for a person who was so extremely community focused and relationship focused and love focused to be so extremely, um, betrayed and abandoned and isolated is is quite um you know it's a, it's an experience it's a spiritual experience for sure